This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2015, an excerpt from the book Taking Stock by Jordan Grummet. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. Today, I'm doing something a little different. I actually have a book excerpt for you. So with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. An excerpt from the book Taking Stock by Jordan Grummet. I remember when my daughter as a young child began to use the D word. When I die, people will walk on me? Even at the age of four, she knew that the dead are buried in the ground. More questions followed rapidly. She thought that if a grandparent didn't show up to pick up her classmate from school one day, he must have died. The same if someone went on vacation for a week. Her statements were unsophisticated yet shockingly honest. Unfettered by the complexity of the adult mind, she was free to explore unencumbered. There was no guilt or embarrassment in her voice. Our conversations lacked the fear and angst that so often cloud this kind of discussion amongst grown-ups. She was curious. Was I dead before you had me? In some ways, my daughter's fascination with death has not evolved as she's grown older. She has lost the innocence as she has forgotten the mechanics and begins to contemplate deeper meaning. What happens to our soul? The pang of love that shatters our hearts, does it just disappear? And I tell her that I don't know. I have helplessly watched life slip away countless times, but I'm no closer to the answer. I have both battled death as the enemy and humbly welcomed its mercy. I have traveled its paths and attempted to veer away at every turn. I no longer see it as a friend or foe, but more as a quiet presence waiting patiently in the wings. Like my daughter, we're all just children, bobbing and floating in the vast ocean of life. Our minds turn, yet we have no control over the direction of the tide. My daughter's voice pulls me back to the little bed in her quiet room so many years ago. Daddy, what does it feel like to die? I drew her in close and held her tightly. My sweet child, I'm still trying to figure out what it feels like to live. We're not very skilled at discussing the D word. Take it from someone who has now spent his career learning how to help people cope with not only the physical symptoms, but the emotional baggage that comes along with death. Like money, we avoid these discussions until we absolutely must have them, until we're either diagnosed with a terminal illness or forced into a financial corner. We suffer in silence because these subjects are taboo. We fear discussion will either hasten their arrival or adversely affect the outcome. Fear is the driver that causes us to manage both so poorly. Yet as my discussion with my daughter so concisely points out, if we want to learn how to die better, we have to learn how to live. And if we want to learn how to live better, we have to tackle the difficult questions surrounding what money means in our lives and how we define enough. The dying, saddled with a terminal illness and a limited amount of time, are often forced to review their lives and either make quick changes or come to terms with all that has occurred, good and bad. When things go well, dreams are met and relationships are repaired. We celebrate the deus ex machina, the magic of a plot twist at the end that brings resolution. I wrote this book to relieve you of the necessity of the dramatic plot twist. What if we can learn now from the dying and get our affairs in order much sooner? Maslow might have called this concept self-actualization. Happiness researchers prefer emotional well-being and life evaluation. I envision using our lives to pursue our own unique purpose, identity, and connections. They all have similar meanings. But to do this, we need to disentangle money from happiness and flatten Maslow's pyramid. I believe that we can aspire to achieve all levels simultaneously. Waiting for financial security unnecessarily delays some of the deepest and most important work we do as human beings. The dying can help us with this difficult process. They can enlighten us, 
they can show us how to change before it's too late. You just listened to the excerpt from the book titled Taking Stock by Jordan Grummet. This has been excerpted from Taking Stock by Jordan Grummet, MD. Copyright 2022 by Ulysses Press. It's been reprinted with permission from Ulysses Press in New York, New York. All rights reserved. Wow, what a powerful message today from Jordan's incredible book, which is available now on Amazon. As a hospice doctor with a front row seat to the regrets of his dying patients, Jordan has a unique perspective on how to live a meaningful life. He's also someone who has thought very deeply about the role money plays in his own life and how to leverage it to explore the things that really matter to him. While we talk so much on the show about the practicalities of managing money, which is important for sure, I think it's imperative for us to maintain perspective. Money is only as good as our clarity on how we're going to use it and our comfort level of how much is enough. It's an amazing tool to help us build a life of meaning, but we so often confuse the tool with the end goal. When we broaden our perspective enough that we can start to use our money to explore some of the deep questions of life, we might find ourselves surprised by the answers. If you liked the thoughts presented today, I'd encourage you to check out Jordan's book titled Taking Stock and listen to his podcast called Earn and Invest, where Jordan and his guests explore some of these deeper questions you could be asking to find a richer path to financial independence. That'll do it for today and another installment of Optimal Finance Daily. Thank you for being here every day and listening, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.